Good afternoon, Professor. The purpose of this report is to determine the optimal capital structure and distribution policy for Comfort Systems, listed as FIX on the New York Stock Exchange, that maximizes value for shareholders. Included in this discussion is a brief historical analysis of these policies since the initial listing, as well as a study of how total returns for the company have compared to the competitors in the broader stock market. Overall, I recommend that Comfort Systems increases their debt-to-value on a market level from 5.12% up to 14.25%. I also recommend that the company ramp up its share repurchase program, increasing the number of shares authorized to be repurchased annually from 1 million to 1.5 million. Now, to arrive at these conclusions, the first step is to model the current situation for Comfort Systems and make sure that it aligns with what, with what is reflected in the stock price for the company. And once that's done, I, be, I can begin to adjust the capital structure and dividend policy to try to increase shareholder value. So we begin with the current situation and annual assumptions around revenue. Project a series of cash flows for the next 10 years of the business. Uh, in fiscal year 2014, 82% of their revenue comes from installation and replacement, 18% from maintenance and service, but their main, uh, their main consumer lines are well diversified across end use sectors, with manufacturing accounting for 24% of the revenue, education 17%, and healthcare 12%. Now with these three leading sectors, I actually project revenue growth for comfort systems based on the growth of those three industries. Now I go into more detail in the Excel file under the tab, other assumptions, but the result is that revenue growth sees a high of 9%, a low of 4%, and then is maintained at 5% for years 2019 to 2024. Moving on to some costs, capex, and depreciation and amortization. I'm going to actually pull up my operational assumptions here as you can see. Um, uh, cash operating costs are around 95% of revenue, but management's goal is to continually invest into improving productivity and efficiency, so I, result, I, I project these to decrease slightly over the next 10 years, uh, but not too much because the main investments for Comfort Systems is on the growth, uh, growing revenue side. Next, for capital expenditures, uh, I noticed that the CapEx spending is related to the prior year's revenue growth, and that if the prior year saw high revenue growth, that next year sees high uh, expenditure in CapEx. So following that pattern, I project CapEx for the 10 years. And then I also, for depreciation and amortization, notice that over the last three years, roughly 28% uh, of the opening PP and E for the year is what the depreciation expense will be. So I carry that across the 10 years uh, and end up with these operational assumptions for the 10-year horizon. Now, moving on to the constant assumptions that will underpin the, the rest of the analysis, we start with asset beta calculation, which I'm going to pull up here. Now the asset beta calculation uses a competitive set of comfort systems and two similar competitors, Ageon Corp and Black Box Corp. Uh, and we start with what is their equity, uh, equity beta as, uh, assumptions from analysts, and then using their cost of debt for the three firms, as well as their current level of debt uh, and market cap, we strip out the effects of leverage to get three estimates for asset beta for like firms in this industry. We end up with an asset beta estimate of 1.46. Now, once we have that, we can move on to determining cost of debt, equity, and the WAC for comfort systems in uh, particular, uh, which we do by developing a table uh, using two ratios, EBIT over interest and debt to assets, so that the cost of debt will change as we take on more debt, which I will pull up here. So as you can see here, what, what I did was I used the three same three competitors and we wanted to match credit ratings to a yield using this competitive set. So we start with the interest coverage ratios and cost of debt for the three firms and then I rank the firms by financial stability and match them to implied ratings. So for example, Comfort Systems has the highest interest coverage and the lowest cost of debt, implying the best credit rating out of the three, and Ageon has the lowest interest coverage and highest cost of debt, implying the worst credit rating. So I give Comfort Systems an, a AA and Ageon a BB, and black boxes in the middle with a triple B rating. Once we have that uh, set up, our model is now capable of determining how cost of debt changes in this industry as a firm takes on more or less debt. So we can now move on to determining the cost of equity for the unlevered firm, the levered firm, and eventually the WAC, which we get to be 9.76%, which matches up nicely to a Bloomberg estimate of 9.8% for the WAC for Comfort Systems. Now, briefly, other assumptions, we've seen these before, but the tax benefits of debt I have flowing directly through the financial statement, as well as financial distress costs. I have them flowing through as a reduction in the, uh, EBITDA. However, with Comfort Systems, you mostly sitting at a double-A, single-A rating, even after my recommendation to add more debt, financial distress costs don't really come into play for this firm too much. 
So now that we have the model that's complete and represents the current state of comfort systems, it was actually within a couple cents of the exact share price at the end of 2014, we can move on to recommending optimal capital structure and dividend policy. Now historically, Comfort Systems accesses debt through a revolving credit facility provided by syndicate of banks and from time to time since the IPO, they've amended the facility to increase the borrowing capacity. Now, Most recently in July of 2014, uh, the company amended the terms to increase capacity from $175 million to $250 million. Now, this is important because historically, Comfort Systems has chosen to operate with a lower level of debt compared to its competitors. But this capacity increase signals a potential change in management opinion as it allowed Comfort Systems to uh, substantially increase this level of debt from the current situation. Now, what I recommend is that Comfort Systems increase from 5.12 to 14.25 debt to value on a market level. I'm going to pull up my capital structure table here so you can see that Comfort Systems is right now in a position where the advantage of tax benefits of debt are greater than the negative impacts of financial distress costs or agency costs that may come with increasing debt. Um, and by increasing the, the, the ratio to 14.25, we, uh, we can increase total value by around $10 million and increase per share by about 1.64% of an increase of total per share. Now, that is for the capital structure. Moving on to div distribution policy. Over the past three years, the company has paid dividends yearly of 0 0.20, 0 0.21, and 0.23, using around 30% of their surplus cash to pay out dividends. Now, the IPO is on 97, they started paying dividends in 05, and since 2005, as we'll see in this chart, they have consistently grown their quarterly and annually dividends. Now, from time to time, uh, in terms of stock repurchasing, the board has approved extensions to a program that started in 2007 to be able to repurchase share, share. Since the inception of that program in 07, they've repurchased a total of 6.6 .6 million shares. Now, what I recommend is that Comfort Systems gradually decreases the proportion of surplus cash paid out as dividends and uses the funds to bump up share repurchases. Um, my dividend policy suggests maintaining the current 30% rate for 2015, but then after that, dropping down to 20% by 2020. Now, with this suggestion, as we'll see in this chart now, dividends per share will continue to grow. And this is important as we don't want to alarm investors who see a dividend reduction as a sign of distress. However, with the new policy, a larger percentage of returns will be coming from capital gains, and this will benefit investors who receive a lower effective tax rate on capital gains. Now, the di new distribution policy will require board of directors to approve an increase in the number of shares that can be repurchased annually from 1 million to 1.5 million, but we believe that that's, in I believe that's within reason. Now, moving on to a comparative analysis of stock returns. The uh, comparative, the competitors in analyzing this section are Qantas Services, listed as PWR in the New York Stock Exchange, and MCOR Group, listed on the New York Stock Exchange as EME. You will see here, as we pull up the competitive analysis of returns, that uh, Comfort Systems, we, we look at we look at first difference between issue pricing and uh, first day price. For Comfort Systems, that difference was around 23% lower issue price than first day price. Now, on average, IPOs are underpriced with approximately two-thirds of stocks rising on the first day of trade. Um, and this trend is due to a variety of factors, including the desire for underwriters and the company to potentially sacrifice initial value in order to ensure that the IPO does actually go through. Companies don't want to see their share price fall on the first day of trade. However, it's interesting to know that Qantas Services actually saw this um, first day price was below the issue price, but it didn't affect the company as the Qantas Services actually, their price went up 47% in the following two months. Um, in fact, all three companies uh, in the competitive set saw substantial growth in the first three months of trade. Now, compared to the uh, S&P 500, since January of 96, the compound annual growth rate for companies in the S&P has averaged around 8.5%. Compared to this return, MCOR has re uh, performed quite well. Quanta Services has performed slightly below average, but still well. And Comfort Systems has the lowest uh, compound annual growth rate in the set. However, it's interesting to note that since Comfort Systems hit its low point in stock price in April of 2003, the company has seen actually relatively consistent growth through the present day at a compound growth rate around actually over 20%. Now, in conclusion, I recommend that Comfort Systems borrow an additional $60 million to increase its debt-to-value ratio from 5.12 to 14.25%.
Uh, the adjustment in capital structure will create $10 million in value and increase total value per share by 1.64%. I also recommend the company ramp up its share repurchasing pro program, decreasing the percentage of surplus cash used to pay dividends from 30% to 20% over the next six years. On an absolute level, the size of dividends paid will continue to increase so as not to alarm investors. However, with a new policy, a larger percentage of returns will come from capital gains. Thank you.